Chargers at the Falcons. Falcons, your thoughts? Yeah, so uh, I'm going to keep this pretty simple here. The running backs, given the hell of bye week that we are in right now, where I'm starting anybody who's alive, I'm, I feel fine firing up both Huntley and Algier. Uh, the matchup plays in their favor here. Not really a great run defense that they're playing against in the Chargers, who've kind of just been a run sieve uh, for most of the year and most of the last couple of years. Um, and then I'm, I'm also parlaying that and saying that Cordell Patterson is back practicing, supposedly limited, I believe, not full practicing yet. But um, if either Huntley or Algier have a solid game here, uh, I'm trying to flip them for anybody else that I can get because CPAT, once he's back, is going to be back to, to lead in this backfield. So take advantage of the value while you have it. Chargers, Mike Williams is out. We know that. And Keenan Allen's hammy, he actually said, I think he said this in a quote, got worse over the bye. And, yeah. and Keenan Allen has stated that he will not play until he's 100%. You know, what do we take from this, right? Um, well, first off, Justin Herbert is good at football, and the Falcons' defense is bad at football. Falcons' defense, bottom five in pretty much any passing defense metric you can find. Josh Palmer is a top 30 option this week. You know, he hasn't been necessarily a star. It's his second year, but I think the opportunity and the targets will come his way. We just saw a couple weeks ago. When targets come his way, like, is it necessarily down the field stuff? No, but I think there's a chance when he sees, you know, a 22 to 25% target share in this game, especially against the bad Atlanta Falcons defense. So I think Josh Palmer should be in a lot of people's lineups, more lineups than people think. And this is regardless if Keenan Allen sits. I'm expecting Keenan Allen to sit. If Keenan Allen does sit, I would actually have some interest in DeAndre Carter as a bit of a deeper option. Um, you know, not a huge fan of DeAndre Carter as, as a player, but I think the opportunity with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams out, you know, you couple that with the fact against how bad the Atlanta Falcons defense is. I mean, everyone tears up the Falcons defense. It's pretty much like the Lions defense. It's just free points in fantasy football. So I'm, I'm firing up Josh Palmer with confidence, and I'm, I'm in a deeper look here. I do have interest in DeAndre Carter. If if both of these guys, DeAndre Carter and Keenan Allen, finish in the top 36 this week, I would not be surprised. And then a little bonus, Gerald Everett is a top five tight end this week as well. Yeah, I mean, if we're looking at it, Cleveland's on a bye, Dallas is on a bye, Denver's on a bye, New York's on a bye, Philly's on, or, uh, Pittsburgh's on a bye, San Francisco's on a bye. Like a lot of fantasy talent just isn't there this week. So we're taking what we can get here. I am Tyler. This is Jake. This is Crush the Competition. Week 9. Man, it's already week 9. Here we go. Uh, pass completion. Here's Lamar on a run. Man, week nine just doesn't even sound right. Like, I had to, like, ask myself, like, did I just say that correctly, man? It's like, it's halfway here. We're halfway done with the football season, man. Yeah, it's insane that, like, I, I went to look up stuff on Fantasy Pros, and it was, like, first half leaders. And I was like, oh, that's we're where we're done. at. We're, we're halfway, halfway done. done. All right, moving along. Dolphins at the Bears. Can your Bears do what my Lions fail to do and beat the Finns? Your Bears, Jake. I mean, probably not, but we can try. Um, <laughs> honestly, even though it was a very recent acquisition to the team, I am comfortable firing up Chase Claypool this week. His talent matches what Justin Fields is able to do so well. Claypool is one of the best go ball runners in football. Fields loves to throw that pass. I think he is like the ninth highest um, go ball throw percentage in football so far. Um, and Miami, while they have a very solid run defense, and that's where the Bears kind of really shine here, um, they're 29th in DVOA against the pass. So they are they are able to be beaten against the pass if you can get it going. I think given the Bears running back talent and Fields talent to move around, they're, they're not going to run as much as they typically do, but they are going to be able to exploit some of those holes in Miami by their run game being so competent. And, and when you have a mobile quarterback like Fields, it's another element that you have to watch for. I think that's going to open up a lot of opportunity for Claypool to come in, put up a nice little line week one. And like we said, you know, it, this is bye week hell. You are, you are taking what you can get in your lineups and Chase Claypool. He's a guy that I'm comfortable throwing in a flex spot this week with legitimate wide receiver, you know, t wide receiver two upside. The Dolphins should feast with, with Quinn and Roquan gone. I mean, this already wasn't a good defense with respect here, Jake. Um, it's true. Jeff Wilson, um, you know, he worked with head 
with head coach Mike McDaniel for four years in San Francisco. I believe he's more familiar with the scheme on offense than any other current Dolphins running back. Jeff Wilson is a bench stash that you need. He does not belong on waivers. We know he is good, and we know he is good given opportunity. And some of that opportunity, I don't know, has de facto been given to him before on a different team by Mike McDaniel. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, with that said, though, I'm still firing up Mostert this week. The Bears yield the fifth most points to running backs. Bears are bottom six run defense three weeks. So Mostert, you know, he's back in the lineup, pretty comfortable top 30 running back. Um, but Jeff Wilson, I think there's some opportunity down the stretch here for him to take some serious opportunity, some serious play away from Mostert. And we know that Mostert hasn't necessarily been a pillar of health throughout his career either. So I think Jeff Wilson is just a, a nice bench dash who I've seen dropped in a lot of places with the CMC acquisition. Yeah, I picked him up in a league as well. You know, worst case scenario, he can't be worse than what Chase Edmonds was doing. So he's at least worth the worth the bench stash for now just to see what you have. Panthers at the Bengals. Bengals, hit me. Usual suspects. Not really a whole lot to say here. You're sticking with your guys. Uh, you know, Tyler Boyd with no Jamar Chase basically becomes a must start every single week, at least in a flex spot. Same with T. Higgins. Um, I don't think we're going to see as bad of a showing as we saw last week with like 10 screen passes called to Hayden Hurst and uh, Joe Mixon, neither of whom are the fastest guys in the world. But I'm just starting the guys that you're typically comfortably starting here. Hurst is basically a top 10 tight end for me rest of season. No reason to not have him in your lineup if he's on your roster unless you have Travis Kelsey, in which case trade Hayden Hurst for whatever you can get for him because you don't need to roster two tight ends. And, and then, you know, Mixon's in your lineup. You know, it, it's just pretty standard here. You're not getting too wild with this offense and you're not throwing in, you know, a Samaj P. Ryan or a Mike Thomas. Panthers. It wasn't Darnold who, who would unlock DJ Moore. It, it wasn't Baker Mayfield. It was PJ Walker, Philip Walker out here unlocking DJ Moore. Once again, we are fired up DJ Moore confidently in our lineups if you were to tell me that it was going to be PJ Walker who did this to us, I would not, um, I would be shocked. But yeah. I'm happy here because DJ Moore is, is, is getting it done. He's getting the looks, you know, albeit part of the reason CMC is not getting targets anymore. So there's more for DJ Moore. But he's also, you know, getting some air yards as well. Things are just good. Love DJ Moore. Fire him up. The important thing to watch this week, though, is can Deonta Foreman get exactly 118 yards rushing for the third week in a row? That's amazing. <laughs> so my other piece here is tempering our expectations with Foreman, right? Um, I don't know if I, would, I don't think he's going to do the 118, but yeah, I don't he's obviously so. a start. I think I think Chuba Hubbard was out last week with an ankle injury. I think he might play if he does. You're still starting Foreman. I think Foreman has proved to be the the better back here. Clearly, if the guy's getting it done, um, we're deploying Foreman as an RB two. I think the one thing that I would do in terms of actionable advice, though, is. You know, if there's a, a running back and needy team out there, like go try to trade Foreman for somebody who's a stud or close to it or an injury. Like I, I'm not expecting anyone to do this, but I swear to God, I saw somebody trade Foreman for Amon Ross St. Brown. It happened. It was in a league. Well, not a league I was in, a league my brother was in. He traded Foreman for Amon Ross St. Brown. It actually happened. I mean, if you think about it, it's not a complete shocker if you don't pay attention. Amon Ross hasn't done a lot lately. He's coming off injury. Foreman just put up like 35 to 40 points, but... Probably shouldn't shoot as high as I'm going to St. Brown, but you could even go a tier below that and look for some guys that you could trade Foreman for. I don't expect – I expect that the best we've seen from Foreman that we've already seen. The rest of the season, he's probably a fine running back for you, but if you can flip him with somebody with a bit more upside, I would give it a shot. Dangle yeah. him out there. Yeah, he's definitely like a, fo a floor play running back. He's not going to – you know, he's rarely ever going to have a three-touchdown game. He might he'll probably never do it again for the rest That's of his fair. career. That's a fair but, statement. He's yeah. never going to have another three-touchdown game in his career. Let's yeah. say that. Yeah. So I think you are at the point where if you are going to shoot for the stars with somebody like this, now is the time to do it, especially if you're a team that's like – eight no seven one six and two basically have a playoff spot in your pocket like you could even flip him for a guy like hollywood brown who you're not going to put him in your lineups for a couple weeks he's going to sit on your bench but you know he's going to be a solid play for you once the playoffs hit yeah or if like the jamar chase owner is um struggling right now yeah packaging foreman and another really good wide receiver uh to try to go get chase so i mean there's a lot of ways you can go about this i just i think what we're getting at here is that foreman's a sell right now the value's peak high 100 percent Packers at my Lions, Jake. Lions, be kind, man. I'll be as kind as I can. Um, Jamal Williams is, I think, a must start basically rest of season. Like, even when Swift is healthy, we saw what he was doing early on in the year, getting a lot of that goal line work, still seeing a, a solid amount of touches here. And with Swift getting five carries and Dan Campbell saying that was probably one carry too many, 
I think there's legitimate concern with DeAndre Swift and his health rest of season. And if we're talking about Jamal, this week especially, he's basically a must-start. The Packers are 31st in rush DBOA. They are one of the worst teams in football against stopping the run. No Hawkinson also likely means some more volume for the wide receivers. And if Swift is on some limited snaps, maybe that means some more receiving volume for Jamal as well. So Jamal is, I would say, a top-12 running back option this week, and I'm pretty confident in saying that even if DeAndre Swift is fired up. Yeah, Jamal Williams, I mean, he, I think – we're going to look back on the draft at the end of the season and say he's one of the, the bigger late round steals that people could have had. I mean, he's been a, a, a absolute locked and loaded RB2 pretty much the entire season with some absolute spike weeks. So it's good to see. If you watch Hard Knocks, the only thing is I felt like after Hard Knocks, everyone loved Jamal Williams. So kind of like his ADP right, like went up a bit, which was right. unfortunate. So I don't have enough of them, but I'm with you on the Jamal Williams thing. I mean, it's top 20 running back. Let's go. Um, Packers. I know, I'll say it time and time again, but the Lions defense is absolutely trash, so you're starting up your Packers here. I mean, there's yeah. no really other way to go about this. Um, Aaron Rodgers is a 12, 12 option this week. I mean, if you drafted Aaron Rodgers, you were disappointed. I think if you're, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a streamer. Let's just call it what it is. He's a streamer at this point, and I think this is a good week to stream Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's, so Aaron Rodgers, I think he's, what, he's never lost three in a row, never, never lost four in a row or something like mm -hmm. that. He's like similar to Brady. They're just having down career years right now. Um, there's no better narrative for me to write than Aaron Rodgers writing the ship against the Lions. I mean, that just makes too much sense. I was going to say, it just feels right. It just feels right. It just feels right. I think if Lazard suits up, he's a pretty safe play. Obviously, Aaron Jones is a good play. I think there's a lot of disappointed A.J. Dillon owners out there, just like Aaron Rodgers. I think that A.J. Dillon's back into flex play this week, um, especially if the, the Packers find themselves up a bit. I could see them just handing the rock up to A.J. Dillon. Just wanted to comment a little bit on the wide receivers here. Kind of going on a, on a tangent here, but whatever. Um, you know, there's some, like, Dubs had a really good game last last week, but, like, yeah. there was some concerning shit that happened. I mean, off the bat, it was Sammy Watkins and Christian Watson playing in two wide receiver sets with Dubs on the bench. Um, Aaron Rodgers mentioned before week eight, before last week, that some players need reps limited due to some of their mistakes they were making. I mentioned on the show, I thought it was Dubs. You know, I think that all but proves it, that he wasn't mm. a starter. But lucky for Dubes, Christian Watson had a concussion. Hopefully Watson's okay. We're not wishing for it. Um, but Watson left the concussion really early on, so Dubes was back on the field, and he had a great showing. Um, Dubes looked great. I expect Romeo Dubes to probably come back as a starter. I think Dubes is a good play. I probably am just going to be a little bit lower on consensus because I think the Packers are a little bit lower on Dubes as well. So um, just a little note there, something to notice. I think you'll see the Dubes stat line. Think, well, wow, he broke out. But he started that game in the doghouse. Um, is he out of it? We'll see. Um, and then Tanyan is also a preferred streamer, top 10 option this week. Raiders at Jags. Both squads looking for win number three. Jags, Jake. Speaking of preferred streamers at tight end, Evan Engram this week is in a smash spot. Raiders are currently allowing the third most points to tight end. Evan is top. Evan Ingram is top five in, in tight end routes run and seventh in in targets and air yard share amongst tight ends. Like this is just the prime matchup. This is when you know you're counting on a guy. You're just even though Evan Engram, yes, he's had some drop issues. Yes, this Jaguars offense has sputtered at points where Trevor Lawrence basically just wants to play hero ball and not take what's given to him. They're going to give Evan Ingram the opportunities here. There's also some injuries on this Ra uh, Raiders defense that you have to worry about here. When their highest coverage grade on PFF is awarded to Max Crosby, who's basically just a career pass rusher, like this is an exploitable defense here, and Ingram is in just about as good of a matchup as you can get right now. Raiders, they need to bounce back in a big way after getting freaking blanked by the Saints last week. Like That's just absolutely embarrassing. Um, pathetic, really. I mean, if we're being honest here, if an NFL team can't score a point in a game. I mean, the Lions did it once, so I know what pathetic looks like. Um, I'm not getting cute here. Start Devontae Adams, start Jacobs, and Waller if he's healthy. I'm in. I'm absolutely fading the rest, including Carr here. Carr is not even slightly on streaming radar. Yep, I agree with you there. When a team has uh, does not cross midfield until 3 minutes and 15 seconds left in the game, that's bad. And that's exactly what the Raiders were last week. And this, dude, and the Saints defense like is not like no. elite. They're like, very middling. Yeah, yeah, they're middling. Like, yeah, it's I don't know what happened. I mean, I'm, I'm it's it's an outlier probably, but still, it's it's a cause for concern. Yeah, it's one of the worst displays of football I have seen. Yeah, and the Raiders time. were more fucked because they traded so much to get Devontae Adams. I mean, like they're in. They're all they're like all in. They're like kind of like yeah. the Broncos. It's like you, you you paid everything, 
you got your guy, you know, Russ and then DA, and then now you just suck. It's like, what are you, you, you going to do? I mean, it's just unfortunate to see, but that's the way it works sometimes, man. You take shots, they don't hit. Yeah, I saw a tweet that was like, every single quarterback that got an elite wide receiver this offseason is smashing, except for Derek Carr. Even Devontae Adams couldn't save him. Yeah, I mean, I'm not shocked. He was going way too high in drafts. I mean, Agreed. Jesus Christ, it's Derek Carr here, folks. Um, anyways, so I digress. Colts at Pats. This does not profile to be a very exciting game. 40 implied points to this one. Your Pats take. Yeah, I'm going to keep it pretty boring here. Patriots defense, fire them up, baby. Might be my defense one on the week. Uh, the Colts are currently allowing the second most points to fantasy defense special teams so far. Might not have a Jonathan Taylor. Already have said, hey, Matt Ryan, probably you, sh- you should retire. Sam Ellinger is not a good quarterback. If I'm getting wild here, I'm calling a Pats defensive special teams touchdown this week. It's okay. It may or may not happen, but I'm going to put a unit on it. I'm a, I'm an open fan duel or uh DraftKings as soon as this is over, either one of them, and I'm throwing a unit down just to see what happens because that's how bad this Colts offense is and that's how good this Pats defense can be uh when getting an opportunity like this to just exploit a really bad team. I'm actually Colts side of the ball. I actually like the Colts defense too. If I'm being completely honest with you, I think the, I think either side of this defense is, is a fine play. I prefer the Pats, obviously, but Colts, excuse me, is pretty solid too. With Hines being shipped out, much like Jeff Wilson, I think Deion Jackson needs to be on your bench as a preferred bench stash. Uh, we've seen the upside Deion, Deion Jackson has on this offense, so he he just walked right into like a. I, I don't is he, is Deion Jackson a premier handcuff role? I think he is with yeah. with how JT's been been hurt this year. So Deion Jackson, Jeff Wilson, two dudes who should not at absolute like this point in your year, Jake. It's it's week nine. You need to be filling your bench with upside. Those are Jeff Wilson and those are Deion Jacksons. Like get them on your bench. Um, not a lot to love here for the Colts. Obviously, like Ellinger is eh, fine. Okay, like all right, Ellinger. Like you you've probably proven enough to be a good backup in the league for the next five years. Like that's where he's at. Yeah. Um, I'm starting Pittman and, and JT if he suits up, but I'm not trusting Alec Pierce in this one. Um, you know, Alec Pierce has been good. I, I've been a bit surprised. It's good for him, but I think there's just so much reduced past volume with Ellinger now that Alec Pierce is just a tough one. For example, I'd rather start Josh Palmer over Alec Pierce. 100% agree with you there. Bills at the Jets. Jets, Jick. Can I pick nobody? Like, that's, <laughs> wh- that's where I'm at with this team. Zach Wilson is not a good quarterback. Brees Hall was the shining spot of this offense. He's gone. You know, James Robinson, he's had a couple big runs here and there, a couple solid games. Those are few and far between at this point. Michael Carter's really nothing special. I guess, if anything, I'm throwing Garrett Wilson in a flex spot, especially because... This week. This week. Yeah, yeah, this week, especially because of how bad everything else in the league is this week, where like 90% of the good wide receivers seemingly are on a bye week. You know, Wilson, he's the he's the most talented wide receiver on this team. I'm pretty comfortable saying that. You know, I like to think Elijah Moore is very talented. He played 10 snaps. It's really Jeff Smith. Like, Jeff Smith played more snaps. Yeah. Who exactly? <laughs> Who? I don't even know. That's where we're at with this Jets team. So Garrett Wilson, he's going in a flex spot. I'm guess if I had to pick a running back, I'm probably starting Carter if I'm in a pinch, but I'd really rather like I'd rather fire up Deion Jackson this week than Michael Carter, even if JT ends up playing. Like, that's... That's, that's bold, but I don't hate it. I mean, I was going to say, Garrett Wilson's a guy that I, I have, I'm have i firing up pretty... I wouldn't say confidently, but considering the buys this week, Garrett Wilson's in my lineup, and I'm like, yeah. good. Okay, he, he's going to get the volume. There's going to be some yards. Yep. Um, I mean, Bills, like, I mean, it's just like, it's beautiful. The, the Bills are just good players to have. I think here's... You can cut James Cook in your redraft leagues. I think yeah, that's the take 100%. here. Um, if you're holding on any hope, it's over. Um, I'm firmly Naheem Hines over Cook, and honestly feel like Hines could even cut into Singletary's playtime after he becomes acclimated a bit more. I mean, they traded for Hines. You know, I think you could go with the old, you know, oh, they traded for him, they're going to use him. I, you know, I think they are, honestly. I, I yeah. think Hines is a pretty talented player, and he's going to find himself, especially in, in, you know, getting some more passes. I think he, he commands that. He's a good player. He earns targets on an offense, in my opinion. Hines shouldn't be on waivers either. Um, I think the other piece here is I'm sitting and holding and waiting on Isaiah McKenzie and Shakir. They still seem to be in a bit of a split for that third wide receiver role. I, I mean, like, I'm not that excited about it, but I can't, you know, turn away from the fact that if one of them overtakes the other, that there's, like, legitimate value to be had as a third wide receiver on the Bills just because how damn good they are. But I'm not really betting on who. Jake, you got any opinions on the McKenzie versus Clear Shakir thing? 
Not really. I think McKenzie's made a lot of mistakes when he has been in the game. He had a few drop balls here and there, a few clearly misran routes um, that you could visibly see Josh Allen a little frustrated about. Even when every wide receiver in this room was healthy in the slot role, it was just a smorgasbord. Like Jake Kumro was getting some play. Crowder, when he was healthy, was getting play. McKenzie was in there a bit. Shakir was in there a bit. I would rather, if I was going to roster one, I would rather roster Khalil Shakir. I think he is the more talented player. Um, but ultimately, like, it's just gross. I, I really would like to stay away from that slot role if I could. Okay. I got thinking about the slot role. Now I lost my spot. Here we go. Let's move on. Vikings at Commanders. Commanders, what you got? Give me Antonio Gibson. I know that Brian Robinson has taken a lot of the rushing touches, but what does that mean? That means Gibby is getting the passing work that he should have been getting the entire time. We should not be using Antonio Gibson, a former college wide receiver who's a 4-3 runner. We should not be using him as a downhill, between the tackles type guy. Get him in space. Get the ball in his hands. He's pacing for a career high in receptions. He is the most talented running back on that roster. I will not falter off that take. And J.D. McKissick is missing practice. He missed practice on Wednesday with a neck injury. Um, so, you know, there's a good chance that he doesn't end up playing in this game, which means that, you know, Gibby's losing even less snaps. He's going to be in a premier role. We're coming off a very good game. Is this Vikings defense the best matchup for running backs in football? No, I don't care. I'm going to fire up Gibson, especially, like we said, by week hell, a lot of really talented options not, not available for us. I'm throwing Gibby in my lineups as a running back, too, and I'm just it's a, it's a set it and forget it type thing with me. I'm not getting cute with it. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, honestly, I mean, Brian Robinson and, and Gibson are a good complement to each other's games here yeah. um, if Jaden McKissick did not exist. But if he doesn't play, they're both startable. Um, and I agree with your takes on Gibson. I think he's more talented. It's just for some reason the coaches do not agree, which is all that matters, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, Vikings. Kirk Cousins is not in a primetime game, which is already a really good thing for him. Um, he plays the Commanders, a defense that's 28th DVOA and 28th in yards allowed per pass. And we get the revenge game narrative with Cousins playing his former team. Um, Cousins is my QB 10 on the week. I expect the Vikings to push the tempo in this game and air it out early and often. We are firing up our Vikings, plain and simple, expecting uh, great weeks, obviously, from J. Jeff. Um, I expect a spike this week. I like Thielen as a top 25, top 30 option. I was liking K.J. Osborne with Irv Smith out, but they did trade for Hawk. I'm probably, if I can, sitting Hawkinson this week, giving him a week to get it acclimated. I think this is better for Hawkinson. But um, I, he's probably going to find himself outside of my top 15. I think there's some better streamers that we've talked about, like Ingram I'd rather have than Hawk this week. Um, but, yeah, no, KJ, with, with Hawk in town, I think it's enough for me to be off of KJ Osborne. I'm just expecting a lot through the air. 300 yards passing for Kirk Cousins and, let's say, three touchdowns. Let's get both. 303 from Kirk. My high roster ship of Kirk Cousins loves that call. <laughs> Seahawks. Cards on paper. Uh, this could be a fun one. You got the cards. I'm going to big brain this and pre-predict that James Conner is going to miss this game, and I'm firing up Zach Ertz and Eno with 100% confidence this week. Um, assuming James Conner misses the game, which I'm very confident at this point that he will. He's still not practicing in full. They're saying he's day-to-day. -day. It's a rib injury. He's a running back. Not a great combination. Um, but this is a, a team that's allowing the seventh most points to running backs, the most points to tight ends. I know D-Hop is getting a ton of the volume right now. It's probably going to be that way rest of season. D-Hop may be a top five wide receiver from this point out, especially with bye weeks and injuries and everything like that that we have to consider. But this matchup is too juicy for these two positions. I know Eno didn't have the greatest game the last time they played the Seahawks, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just firing these guys up. And I'm plugging them in my lineups. Like we said, we're in, uh, we've stated it once. We'll state it a million times. Bye week hell. Things are getting weird. Options are getting out there. Zach Hurts, I know the volume is decreased with D-Hop here, but I'm just taking this matchup and running with it. Seahawks are showing, you know, quite the willingness to throw this season, which is something they never really did with Russ under center. Um, and DK Metcalf reminded everyone that regardless of injury, if he's active, you got to start him. Yeah. Um, Seahawks are simple. Again, not going to drum up a take here. You start Geno, you start DK, you start Lockett, and you start Ken Walker with confidence. You fade the rest. You know, DK and Lockett were heavily faded this offseason, um, and they're really showing folks why you always bet on talent. So you love to see that. 100%. Rams at Bucks. This is one of those games, Jake, where – you know, before the season, you'd be stoked to watch it. But after eight weeks, this is pretty gross, man. You got the Bucks side. 
Give me the Buccaneers defense, baby. This is a Rams team. Cooper Cup is banged up. He may not see the play that he does. We know the other wide receivers on that team aren't very good. Um, we know that Matt Stafford's elbow is basically Swiss cheese at this point. Like, there's not a lot holding that thing together. It's going to explode at any moment. Darrell Henderson is banged up. They don't want Cam Akers to be playing football for their team at this point. Ronnie Rivers is exactly um, Tyler Higby. Like he's not gonna smash against this defense. I'm I'm just I'm just taking the Bucks defense here. Like there's just so many options that are not gonna be 100 percent for this Rams team. I don't think they're gonna give Cup the play that he normally does. And the Rams are already allowing the most fantasy points to defenses right now. I'm just gonna take a Bucks defense, plug him in there. Obviously, you're starting Mike Evans, you're starting Godwin, you're starting starting Lenny. Like it's you're not getting weird with this offense, but the defense is one of like I would argue, uh, like, I would trade for this defense this week if I could make something happen because I think they're in that big of a smash spot right now. Rams. Rams offense is terrible. Like, I feel like I'm talking about how we talked about the Panthers, like, earlier this season with Mayfield, where it's like, you start cup and fade the rest. Like, how the mighty have fallen. When you're talking about, an, like, an offense in fantasy football and there's only one startable player, shit's bad, yeah. right? Like, that's bad. And that's where we are right now with the Rams. It's literally start Cooper Cup and fade the rest. Um it's it's just pathetic. I mean, Higby is probably in play. I mean, I think it's more of a testament of like the tight end position in the bye weeks than anything else with Higby. Um, but yeah, I mean, the only person I'm excited to play is Cup here, so it's it's brutal, man. Let's just move along. Hundred percent. Titans at Chiefs. Both teams five and two. Titans every year just surprise me, man. They just win freaking football games. Anyways, Titans are five and two. Both teams looking for win number six. You got the fun side at the Chiefs. Given that we are in. The state that we are in with bye weeks, I am basically comfortable firing up Tony, Juju, MVS, and me, Cole, and just hoping I made the right call there. Uh, this is a Titans defense that's first in rush DVOA. They're not allowing teams to run the ball against them, but they are giving up the fourth most points to wide receivers right now. I'm just, if I have one of those guys on my team, I'm putting them in there. If they're on my waiver wire, you know, I'm starting Josh Palmer over a lot of them, but like Juju is basically a smash for me. And the rest are like high upside plays where they could get five or six balls a piece maybe, but each of them have the athletic ability to turn that into a bit, you know, a big play here and there and a, and a touchdown. And given a, a, the state that we are in where I'm looking at like Demarcus Robinson, or one of these guys, like I'm just pretty comfortably playing any of these wide receivers in my flex spot this week and hoping I made the right call. Titans, you know, I expect a competent Chiefs defense to try to just take Henry away and force likely Tannehill to beat them, you know, in the past game. Henry's still an auto start. You know, it's more of a personal anecdote here. But, you know, you fade all the Titans pass catchers. You're going to keep fading the Titans pass catchers. I mean, Woods in a pinch, like, I'm not excited. Like, Robert Woods is in that DeAndre Carter of, like, all right, I guess if he got to fire him up. Yeah, like, he's, um, in, he's in that tier, in my opinion, with, like, the Tony MVS Meekle where it's, like, you just throw the dart and hope that you get it right. Yeah, and, it, like, there's a world, you know, with Tannehill back under center, they could throw the ball 20, 25 times. You know, Woods could see five or six targets. Like, I'm not I'm not advocating for starting Robert Woods here, but I, this is a – you could do worse. Um Robert Woods thing I think the take here is if you have an IR spot open I have interest in Traylon Burks I know I've been very vocal about him unfortunately the injury took him down as things were starting to move up the offense needs a spark beyond Derrick Henry and the Titans drafted Burks to be that spark in the first um Henry was limited on Wednesday uh, it's Thursday now I don't have an update yet likely nothing because it is Wednesday but also you know, if you have a bench spot, adding Dontrell Hilliard is, is not the worst idea either. So if you have an IR spot open, you know, stash Traylon Burks. It could be back in a couple weeks. And um, if you're hurting at RB, I think Dontrell Hilliard with uh, Henry not practicing on Wednesday, toss him on there. If, if Henry's practicing again, drop him for somebody else. But those are the kind of moves, in my opinion, that, you know, kind of like start tipping the scale in your favor as you're just kind of being smart about who's out, who's not, what your bench looks like this time of year. Yeah, you're just looking for a guy that if something happens, uh, this guy can be in a role. That's that's basically what your your bench should be at this point. Close things out. Ravens at Saints. Monday Night Football. Saints, Jake. Since week four, this man is the 12th best player at his position, and that's Andy Dalton, which is shocking to say if, I, if we were coming into week one that Andy Dalton would not only perform when Jameis Winston is hurt, but also take his role once he's healthy again. 
Like Dalton is in a very good spot this week. This Ravens defense allowing the eighth most fantasy points Two quarterbacks. Um, you know, Alvin Kamara, he's finally looking like himself again. He, he's producing, you know, maybe we don't have a, a Jarvis Landry. We almost definitely don't have a, a Mike Thomas again, but Chris Olave is performing. He's made Jawan Johnson streamable at times. Like Andy Dalton is just looking like a different quarterback than he has for the past few years. He's coming off another good week where he was, I believe the quarterback 18. So not, great but definitely not killing you here but i'm pretty comfortable if i need a streaming option at quarterback this week that andy dalton is that guy ravens mark andrews seems to be dealing with a minor shoulder injury labeled as nothing serious but still you want to make sure you got isaiah likely rostered just in case um frankly anyone who has tight end issues or mark andrews should go see if isaiah likely is available because if for some reasons mark andrews sits we have seen already that Likely is a top 10 play. Um, they will feed, Lamar Jackson will feed Isaiah Likely the ball. I mean, this bodes well for Likely moving forward, but I don't think this is a surprise at this point over the year, Likely tore it up in the preseason. Um, the other piece here is Bateman looks to be out for a few weeks. Truly a lost season for Rashad Bateman. Yep. Uh, one of my favorite prospects. It, it really sucks to see, you know, two years now. It it's, begs the question, is, is it, will he ever, you know, have it? Um, you know, I'll, I'll probably say yes, but. I'm not surprised if he doesn't. Duvernay uh, brings us to, to Duvernay. Top 36 option this week. He's in that Palmer territory we spoke of. Um, pretty confident. Like, I would I would play Duvernay over all those, like, Tony and me, Cole, and MVS, the Chiefs that you yeah. said, just because we know Duvernay is going to gonna get some run. He's going to get the targets. He seems to be that guy. So Duvernay actually is a pretty solid option this week. And there's the non-zero percent chance that he returns a punt or a kick for a touchdown. It's The option's there. There's another little uh, tick right there that makes us want to start him, man. All right, that's going to do it. Week 9, crushing the competition, JWB. Jake, final thoughts? Uh, it's uh, not as great of a week as I would hope for our first game past like the halfway point of the season, but a lot of options still going on here. It's going to be a disgusting week of fantasy, but I'm going to love the 101 to 99 wins that I get this week. There we go. And, Jake, where can I find your work? Or you can find you on Twitter. You find all of my fantasy content at JWB underscore FF and through my Twitter, which is at Perry underscore FF. And then you can find my personal podcast, Two Average Husbands, on all streaming platforms and on Twitter on Instagram at the number two ABG Husbands. You can find me on Twitter at FF Tyler. That's all we have today, folks. Don't forget, tell somebody you love them. Later.